Hi, welcome to The Sound Project. My name's Gavin. I'm Ryan. And today we're gonna to be talking about everyone that you would need on your team to build a studio. A rough overview is gonna be like acoustical consultants like us, you'll need general contractors. Some people will have interior designers as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll need somewhere to get gear from, maybe someone to integrate all of that gear for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes you'll need an architect. It really kind of varies depending on what the project looks like. Absolutely, this this um, roster that you're building, like sometimes people will contact us and, and we're acoustical consultants. We do handle a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we don't do it all, you know, right. and, and for us, uh, we're big proponents of, of letting people do what they're great at. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we don't specify gear. Uh, we don't, uh, we're not architects. Yeah. We're not structural engineers. And and so uh, to, to try to give advice on that front would, would not be, be wise. And, and it's something where they, they need those other team members. And it really just, it takes a village to make this happen. You yeah. know, like to make a studio happen, there's a lot of people that need to get involved. And if every one of those uh, roles are is handled by someone that that's their specialty. Mm -hmm. You're just going to get a much better result. Yeah. And uh, so to go through like some of these these different different roles, um, the acoustical consultant position, we can talk about that first. That would be us. Yeah. Um, uh, and and uh, so it's what we do every day, and and we handle all of the elements that are going to impact the acoustical performance of the room. And it could be uh, sound isolation, you know, making sure that the, the good sounds stay in and the bad sounds stay out of the room and, and, and uh, make sure you're not disturbing neighbors or, or other people disturbing your recordings. Mm -hmm. And then there's also sound quality. You know, the room needs to perform at a high level so that you have acoustical accuracy in the room. Mm -hmm. And while those are our main our main focuses, uh, there's so many other elements that we get involved with, like the aesthetics and uh, the electrical details and conduit, how you get audio from room to room. Yeah. Uh, there's just so many things that, that we cover. And in fact, we're going to do a, an episode in the future just specifically on what an acoustical consultant is and, and what yeah. we handle and what we don't handle. Because we'll be the first person to say, hey, we should really defer to a structural engineer on this yeah. or, or, or to an architect. Um, but we handle pretty much all things sound you know I, I sometimes tell people an acoustical consultant is kind of like an interior designer for sound yeah you know we're trying to we're trying to make it uh sound as good as possible in these rooms and while that's our focus like we still have a big part in the communication part at least with all of these mm -hmm. other parties because i would say that we're kind of that rare scenario where we have to work with everyone on when it comes to the contractor you know we need to help them with some of the specifications that we require just because isolation is so different or mm -hmm. the architecture because we're doing the CAD drawings usually sometimes we have to like work together on that side so yeah. I think we do have our hands like with everyone else but yeah. yeah it's definitely a little different yeah and what I love about our team too is that we're really diverse in our skill set yeah. um, you know we have three uh, degreed engineers on staff mm -hmm. uh, we have someone who has a master's in architecture we've got people that have music technology degrees uh, we have people that have worked at uh, pro audio dealers and, and know gear really well while yeah. we don't specify it we need to have a good understanding of, of what uh, what goes into a studio absolutely uh, and we have people that are also have a marketing background so it's it, you know everything that that uh, uh, goes into our team it just makes us better when working with all these other trades yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, the next one on the list would be a, a builder and a contractor you know we can produce the best plans in the world but someone's got to carry it out you yeah. know it's it's something someone has to pull that off and and do it well and when I'm looking for a contractor, the, the main thing I, I'm looking for are people that um, have great attention to detail, mm -hmm. you know, someone that, that is going to uh, really look at all the fine uh, print in, in our plans and, and look at, look at uh, how we want things done and, and want to pull that off. Mm -hmm. uh, we also look for people that um, aren't afraid to ask questions, you know, someone that, that uh, they may not know at all when it comes to studio design. They probably don't because sure. most of the contractors we work with, it's a lot of times the first time they've ever built a studio yeah. before. And that's okay, like we're fine with that. Um, our projects are scattered all over the world and, and it's rare that we're working with the same company twice on these these jobs. Mm -hmm. And so we've just become uh, really good at, at communicating these and kind of uh, walking them through that process. Yeah. And then the other thing I look for in a contractor is just someone that's excited about learning a new trick. You know, like what you don't want is someone who would come in and say, 
hey, I know the plans say this, but it'd be a lot easier to do it this way instead. You know, that that's what you want to avoid. You want someone that wants to uh, to learn the process and and get excited about that that piece of it. Yeah. Um, and that contractor is going to handle a lot of different things, and they may have subcontractors uh, within that that are electrical contractors or HVAC contractors. Mm-hmm. You know, people that that are going to carry out different aspects of the project, but uh, the contractor as a whole is a super important part of this because uh, the implementation of the design is just as important as the design itself. Yeah, absolutely, and that's one of those things too that I always stress that in like the first call that we have with clients, where you know, finding a contractor that has built a studio before, they really are few and far between. So as long as they are detail oriented and they're willing to learn something new, like it really does work out where they design great spaces. So. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, the next one on the list is a structural engineer. And this this comes into play most often when we're building a, a new structure where mm-hmm. it's from the ground up and, and you know, we, we've got to obviously, uh, we're designing the space to sound good acoustically and be well isolated, but also, A structural engineer needs to sign off on making sure that the amount of weight that we're adding to ceilings and floors and walls are are going to stand up. And and, and they're even more important when we're doing our jobs in California where there's seismic codes and things that we need to need to uh, uh, look out for. And and that's another thing is that all these different trades, what's great about working with someone locally rather than bringing in a contractor from out of state or so Mm -hmm. um, is that they're going to be well more... uh, more well versed in the local codes yeah. uh, than than someone that would be from out of state because from from uh, county to county sometimes things can vary mm-hmm. on what needs to happen. But this uh, structural engineer will lean on them when it comes to making sure what's designed can be uh, pulled off in a safe manner. You, know, you, you want to make sure that that everything is is done properly and and that there's no safety concerns. Mm-hmm. Uh, another person is uh, very important in this process is an architect. Yeah. You know and. Uh, an architect uh, a lot of times is going to definitely be needed if we're building a new structure yep. because there's going to need be permits that are pulled and, and uh, uh, a plan set that can be, be stamped and, and permitted. And the other thing with an architect, uh, you know, we're working on multiple projects right now with architects and, and they just bring... Um, a whole another understanding of of uh, building codes and egress, uh, like uh, you know, fire codes, things like that, that we need to, to be considered. That yeah, we're we're getting more and more dialed in on that front, and you know, with with uh, also Tracy on our staff being uh, have her having her masters in architecture, that helps yeah. us a ton on that front. But uh, it, it's something where uh, these architects are masters of their trade, and we yep. can give them an initial design, and then they can. Uh, let us know like what's possible, what's not possible, how we can adjust things in order to, to meet local codes and, and get yeah. permits where we, where we need them. And that's another one that having a local to the project architect really like, well, one, it's required if mm-hmm. it's a new structure, but yeah. it makes it so much easier just because they are familiar with what permits have to be pulled and mm-hmm. like what is what are the guidelines in that city or that county? Yeah, absolutely. So the architects, we love working with architects because while we know a lot about it, we are not licensed architects yeah. and, and it, it, it's good to lean on them for that. Absolutely. Uh, the next one on the list is an interior designer. And I would say that an interior designer being involved in the project is honestly only only about 10% or so of yeah. the jobs that we we work on. Um, we end up being kind of de facto interior designers sometimes, and and we're doing these uh, photorealistic 3D renderings and, and trying to make really great looking spaces. Uh, but it's not what we've been trained to do. Yeah. It's just what we've learned over the years and, and figuring out what looks good in a studio. Yep. Um, but it, we love it when an interior designer is involved because it's something where they have great ideas and we can bring that to life while also hitting the acoustical um, uh, you know, targets that we're, we're wanting to hit. And there is sometimes a little bit of a learning curve on that front because sure. what uh, an interior designer might normally do in a space we just can't pull that off in a studio without sacrificing too much sound quality. And yep. so, uh, you know, I love uh, collaborating with them because we can take these great ideas that they have and then just might have to alter it slightly in order to get the acoustical results we want, but then still end up with this amazing looking space at the end of the day. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, another one is like an AV um, integrator or an equipment dealer, like yeah. someone that you're getting gear from, you know, and, and uh, obviously, 
sometimes that's the most fun part of uh, people's studios is uh, all the gear that they they're they've acquired or or they're purchasing for this this new build yep. um, and you need to have a trusted source for that and yep. and make sure that uh, you, you can um, um, get the products that you need but then also uh, be able to bounce ideas off of that that person and say like hey what, what do you think about this what do you think about that um, you know, we get asked a lot about gear. Uh, we try to stay away from that quite a bit just because while we're all musicians here at Haversick Designs and, and we, we like gear and we have, have opinions on things, um, we also understand, too, that it's very subjective of yeah. what people like. You know, we, we get asked a lot, uh, what speaker manufacturer should we go with? What, what speakers are the best? Um, and really, the answer is you need to go listen to some and, and pick out the ones that are best for you. Because once you get to a certain level of speaker, like, they're all really great. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of what you prefer. And absolutely. so we, we try to stay away from saying you absolutely have to use this speaker. It, it does come into play because we want to know what speaker is being used and, and uh, uh, that's going to impact potentially like w- how we're treating a room and if we're soffit mounting it versus stand mounting it. There's a lot of factors that so we need to be informed about it. Sure. But we're not going to push any agenda on that front because it's like it's it's a personal preference. Absolutely. So an, an AV integrator and equipment dealer is going to be really helpful to kind of guide you through that process and uh, help supply the gear that's going to make the room uh, really take off. Yeah. Um, the next one that we have here is uh, acoustical treatment manufacturers. So um, there's a lot of parts of our design that we are designing that are custom elements that are going to be built on site by, by someone. Uh, but then there's also uh, off-the-shelf treatments or custom items that are, are manufactured. They're, they're pre-built and shipped to your location and you just hang them on the surfaces where where we tell you to. And uh, there's a lot of different treatment manufacturers out there and uh, there's different aesthetic choices, there's different acoustical performance. Like we're always looking at the data, like making sure that it performs the way it needs to. Uh, But also we want it to look a certain way and and we add these these manufacturers products into our renderings and and really get a, a good result and uh but you, you're that's going to be part of the team too is is hooking up with the, the right manufacturer and and uh orchestrating getting that order placed and and the, the products delivered and that's something with the treatment now i feel like the options are really limitless as far as i mean you can get things printed on the treatment now i mean you could do stretch fabric and have murals put up in a studio yeah. you'd have different shapes i mean there's so many options now to it, fit an aesthetic exactly it's, it's come a long way from egg cartons on the wall yeah. you know so <laughs> it's it, there's so many different aesthetic options and and really cool uh, uh testing data that's been done that that products that are tuned for different frequencies and um yeah there, it's it's so cool to see that science just be uh, evolving over time and and, and getting better yeah uh, next thing here is a, a treatment installer. So it's not always the case that the contractor that builds the the room is also going to be the one that installs everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and because when it comes to the treatment installation, sometimes it's a really specific process that there's companies that that's all they do. And, and you really want to kind of go towards them to, uh, to, to handle that finishing off of the room. So mm-hmm. the general contractor might get it all the way to uh, drywall level and windows installed and doors installed, but then maybe sometimes another company will come in to build custom base traps and do the stretch fabric systems, uh, ones that are are just uh, well-versed in doing that. And again, we like to let people do what they're they're good at, and Mm -hmm. there's companies that specialize in that. Now, I will say that sometimes that role of the treatment installer is played by the client themselves yeah. or uh, people that uh, that they, um, uh, you know, friends, family members that are handy and they, they, they are able to do it themselves and maybe save a little bit of cost that way. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's the, the important part is just getting it done right acoustically, but then aesthetically that fit and finish is so important mm-hmm. that having a, a treatment installer can, can kind of take it to the next level. Absolutely. Uh, the last one on the list is the equipment manufacturers. And uh, so, uh, you know, we'll interact a lot of times with speaker manufacturers, console manufacturers, you know, getting details as far as uh, the size and, and design of, of these uh, different pieces of equipment that's going to then integrate into our, our design. So um, these equipment manufacturers are, are great to lean on for uh, how to use their products because like every speaker is not designed the same right. and and uh, you know consoles and microphones and different things like that um, having them as a resource and being able to bounce ideas off of them and, and uh, is really helpful for us and then also yeah. the client can interact with them as well 
Absolutely. Yeah. And that wraps up kind of what a standard team would look like. Like this is absolutely not a one man show when it comes to building a studio. There's a lot of people involved and we absolutely all lean on each other just because everyone does have a different strength and Mm -hmm. has something to bring to the table to get the projects finished. Yeah. For me, the, um, uh, it, it, like I said earlier, it takes a village. Like all these people are important. Mm-hmm. And for us, like we don't have a big ego about this stuff. No. Uh, we, you know, if, if someone comes to us with an issue, um, we just want to solve the problem. Yeah. Uh, we, we're, we're not going to, uh, be combative in any way like we just you know everyone's going to have their own um, uh, you know role in here yeah. but the vision is still the same like we want to create a studio that's amazing and inspiring for people and uh you know luckily the teams that we've always you know played a role on it always goes really smoothly yeah. you know because you just as long as you treat people with kindness and you know that we have our best interests in mind it's, it's yeah. all going to go really well absolutely yeah well, that's it. I mean, yeah, I just want to kind of give a, an overview of that that studio roster, just kind of give you an understanding of like all the different pieces that go into this and uh, how important it is to select a, a good team member for each one of those roles. And uh, we really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these things and being part of the sound project. If you've got any questions, feel free to comment below or, or you can email us at info at haversickdesigns.com. Um, and we're excited about future episodes. If you've also got some ideas that you want us to address, uh, f- feel free to reach out and uh, look forward to seeing you next week.